Hello everyone and welcome back to .NET Core Central, the website for everything .NET Core. Today I'm going to continue with the application that I started in my last video. In my last video, I have created a Kafka consumer as a part of my streaming application in ASP.NET Core. And in this video, I'm going to create a Kafka producer in .NET Core. So for that, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project in my time management solution. So I'm going to right click, create new project. And this one definitely going to be a console application, at least for the time being. So I'm going to name it as time management dot streaming dot producer. So after the project is created, I'm going to add the new get package for Kafka. So I'm just going to go to manage new get package, go to browse and search for Kafka. And just as last time, I'm going to install the confluent.kafka NuGet package. Install, accept. And once it is installed, I'm going to create a new interface. I'm going to start with a new interface. And I'm going to name the interface as iBookingProducer. Just like the consumer, which is meant for consuming booking related messages. For this producer, I'm going to start with booking producer. So essentially, this is the interface which will be used by the end application or for publishing booking related message into the Kafka stream. I'm going to name this as public. And this is also going to have a single method. So I'm going to just keep it as void for the time being. And I'm going to name this as produce. And for simplicity right now, I'm just going to pass it as a string message. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a class for booking producer. I'm going to create a new class, name it as booking producer. I'm going to make it as public. And then this class is going to implement the interface i booking producer. I'm going to implement the interface. Okay. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the confluent.kafka namespaces. So confluent.kafka is the namespace I'm going to use. And here, let me first see if I have, just like the consumer, if I have a producer as well. So var producer equal to new producer look like I have. And it's the same thing. It takes a key and value. So just like my consumer, which doesn't have any key, for the producer also, for the time being, there will not be any key and the value will be a string. And then next thing, it also needs a config, key serializer and a value serializer. Just like the previous consumer, I'm going to first create a config, which is a dictionary. So here, let me go ahead and create a config. So var config equal to new of dictionary. And this dictionary is going to be same. It's going to be a string and an object. So string as the key and object as the value. And then here I'm going to add the appropriate config values. So the first thing I'm going to add to my config is going to be the bootstrap servers. And that is going to be 
localhost colon I'm just going to check the bootstrap server here 90 92 so I'm just going to paste it from the consumer that's about it that's the only thing we need for the producer so I'm going to give the config and then for this one I'm going to provide now and for serializer I'm going to keep similar serializer as I have for the deserializer on the other side which is essentially a string deserializer with UTF-8 so here I'm going to say new string serializer uh, I have to add the serialization namespace so using confluent dot kafka dot serialization and now I'm going to say string serializer and this is going to take the encoding dot utf 8 so this will create my producer now since producer also has an implementation of i disposable so I'm just going to add it inside the using block so now here my producer is created so after the producer is created the next thing I'll have to do is publish a message so for publishing message I'm going to use producer dot uh, produce async it's essentially what I'm looking for so so in produce async I'm going to give the topic it's the same topic it's going to be time management underscore booking and then my key is going to be null and my value is going to be the value that I'm getting as a part of the message now here the thing is you know I have two options one is I keep the producer open and then pump in as much message as I can and then flush the producer or every time I need I create the producer produce the message and then flush it out so in my case I'm just going to do a flush so I'm just going to provide 10 milliseconds here so that's my producer after I created the producer now I'll have to use the producer so for using the producer what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the program.cs oh, I'm in the wrong one so this is the program.cs for producer so here I'm going to keep this enter your message this is just for the time being until you figure out how to produce the message for the time being it will be a console and we'll enter the message from the console UI eventually when I build up this time management application to have a user interface at that point in time when a booking is going to happen that's when this message this producer will be invoked to publish the message into Kafka so here it just enter your message and enter Q for quitting let's just keep smaller case Q so first I'm going to declare so var message is equal to default string and then I'm going to say while message is not equal to Q then I'm just going to continue pumping the message so here var producer equal to new of booking producer again the interface that I created will be more useful when we use it in the real API part once I end up building the UI for now I could have just gone ahead and created a class 
plus when I go get into unit testing this will be very helpful now I'm going to do producer dot produce and I'm going to pass the message here so that's my producer it's ready to be tested so what I'm going to do is build application so that everything is built uh, my Kafka is up and running this is my um, zookeeper server and this is the Kafka both of them are up and running so my build is going on as soon as the build is done I am going to run the producer as a console outside of the application and I am going to debug the produce uh, debug the consumer so I am going to go ahead click on consumer keep it ready I don't have to debug it I can just run both of them let's do that so I'm going to go to command prompt I'm going to open up two command prompt so first I'm going to go to the consumer folder here I'm going to do dot net run so it is going to start the consumer and now I'm going to go here I'm going to do CD and then go to the producer this time so I'm going to keep both of them side by side so that I can see the message and here I'm going to go to the producer Streaming dot producer. I'm going to do dot net run. So it is going to start the console application, and as you can see, it's asking me to send a message. So I'm going to send a message. Hi from dot net core producer. What happened? Something is not working. Some problem because my consumer is getting empty messages clearly so let me quit let's break this go back to my producer let's find out well I do not have a console.read line I'm just taking a default of stream do console.read line and then I put it inside ok so it is set the console dot read line and then it will compare it with Q and then pass the message so I'll my producer is still running I have to I just kill it so that my build is successful and my build is successful so I'm going to start the consumer again consumer is up and running I'm going to start the producer start it's up and running again I'm going to say hi from dotnet co producer and clearly something is not working the only thing I can think of is this post async is it somehow waiting on the message and not flushing it let me try to get waiter and then just get the result though I'm not going to do anything with the result but essentially what I'm doing is making it synchronous so let me try again 
that starts the producer once again and I have my consumer running here once the producer is started I'm just going to say hello yep looks like that was the problem I dot net I from dot net go Let's see if it works yeah I'll have to read a little bit more to understand why is it behaving that way ideally it should not the other option is to make the producer as evade essentially you know the booking producer produce method return a task and then deal with that but essentially I have to do the same thing I'll have to wait until the message is published before I flush it looks like this hack worked honestly I don't know how it worked why it worked I'll have to do a little bit more digging to understand why this is behaving the way it is but my dotnet producer and consumer both are working as expected and uh, just like the consumer you can see the producer is also very simple and straightforward in fact it's probably much lesser code compared to the consumer just config with the bootstrap server and then just passing on the message into the Kafka so that's all I have for today in my next video I would implement reactive extension for the consumer so instead of the consumer taking an action consumer might still take an action I'll have to see I will have a reactive extension on top of it so that I can filter out the messages based on certain criteria I will probably end up using keys at that point in time so that based on the key I can filter message and push it to a different pipeline or something like that we'll see what I do next time but reactive extension is definitely the next logical step when we talk about streaming so we had external streaming or you know having a stream come from a different system into Kafka and then into dotnet core and then inside dotnet core I can have reactive extension for streaming internally and provide the data into multiple consumers inside of my application so that's what I will focus on in my next video thanks everyone for watching and uh, have a wonderful day and don't forget to subscribe my channel